What is up, everybody? I am Corey. I am the GM of Hostile, the World PvP Twink Guild on Telebim, which is the PvP server for Turtle WoW. This is my priest, Enigmatic. Enigmatic, as you may see, is a level 19 priest with 952 health. Oh my god, how'd you get so much health? I'm going to show you that. Uh, this video is going to be me going over my twink. Us here at Hostel, we are currently trying to build our ranks and help other people get geared. And we just took part in a PvP tournament yesterday and then uh, a lot of world PvP yesterday afternoon. And I figured since we're doing all this now, since we're going out roaming, kind of starting to make a name for ourselves on our server, we might as well start putting out videos showing our gear, how we got the gear, how you could get the gear, and how you could start working on your own twink. Now, the first class we're going to look at is going to be my priest. Priests are not fun to gear. Priests take a very long time. Priests take a lot of gold. And... It's annoying. I'm going to be completely honest with you. Building a caster twink is probably the most annoying thing that I've done in WoW. However, the flip side to that coin is when they are done. Oh my lord. They are so fun. Now, I am not fully geared yet. I don't really have any enchants. I have some. I don't have the main enchants yet. So this is a work in progress, as we'll call it, but I want to show you kind of what you're looking for, what you're going for. And if you would like to start taking part in these type of events, um, look us up on Turtle Wow. Like I said, Turtle Wow, Telebim server, Horde side, look us up. Let's 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 start killing some alliance, you know? Let's have some fun. Let's do it. So we'll look at the talent tree first. The bread and butter of this build, the way that I did it, it basically, let me let me do a real quick diatribe, if you will, about weapons, spells, resistances, things of that nature. So calculations for every type of um, attack section, we'll say, is a little bit different. So melee attacks have a certain percent of hit chance, miss chance, yada, yada, yada. You know the deal. So do guns and bows. So do spells. So do wands. Now, I have been playing World of Warcraft since 05, 06, something like that. Before TBC launch is when I started playing WoW. I have been playing Classic WoW. Oh, man. I don't even know. Um... I started playing Classic WoW when Light's Hope was the big, like, the big thing. So I didn't start when Nostalrius was popping, but I started in Light's Hope. And I have been focusing on leveling different characters, seeing how different things work. And from my testing, from my playing, what I found is that Wands have a less miss chance and a higher capability of hitting targets that are higher level than you than any other weapon type in the game. I don't know if it's supposed to be that way. I don't know if it's mathematically actually that way, or if I just have insanely good luck with wands. I don't know what it is, but I know that wands are incredibly powerful. So I put five points into wand damage. This is an okay one to have if you want, but in my opinion, it's not worth the points you'd be giving up to get this. These are all pretty much wasted points. Don't even, just don't even look at those. Uh, pretty much this is not enough to make it impactful. This is not en enough to make it impactful. This just doesn't, that, that's, that just ignore that. It's too much to read right now, but it doesn't matter. Um, two points in this. This is going to uh, help you not get interrupted while you're trying to cast your spells. You're trying to heal yourself. You're trying to heal your friends. 70% chance to not get interrupted. That's incredibly overpowered. Now, you could take those two points and put them over here to make this a 10% chance to stun for three seconds, but as I stated with the wands, your spells have a way higher chance of being resisted or of missing. Like, I don't know if they actually miss, but of being resisted. Not worth it. It's not worth the two extra points taking it out of the interruption uh, denial to put in here 
especially with how much your opponents are going to be resisting. Could put points in this to make that more capable, but then you'd be losing out 25% damage on your wand. In my humble opinion, absolutely not worth it. Not worth it at all. So again, 5 points in wand damage, 2 points into healing focus, 3 points in this. This is still a work in progress talent build. This is what I'm currently using. It may change later. It may not. This feels really good for me right now. I've tried four or five different setups, and this is the one that I'm sticking with. Now, let's look at the gear and kind of how I got this gear, how you could get this gear. The first thing we're going to be looking at is the Speedy Racer Goggles. Speedy Racing, Speedy Racer Goggles are incredibly overpowered. Uh, 14 agility, 14 intellect, 53 armor. Now, the 53 armor, armor's negligible that doesn't matter too much in the grand scheme of things 53 is it 20 armor i mean it's it's basically another chest piece worth of armor plus but it's not it's armor doesn't matter um 14 jilly 14 intellect you can get this item and equip it as low as level one you get this item by going to 1000 needles Go to 1,000 Needles over here in Shimmering Flats. You talk to Daisy. And you talk to Daisy, you do the little race, and you get a chest. Now, if you get yourself set up correctly, you get two chests per race. I heard today that you can get three per race, which is fucking mind-blowing if that's the case. Um, that'd be amazing. But I know for an absolute fact that you can get two chests per race if you do the Goblin pre. Uh, Prequest, you do the gnome prequest, and then you pick up both the goblin and the gnome quest, do the race, turn them both in, pick them both back up. And now, you know, you've got two chests, and you run the race again, you've got two more chests. Chance on drop when you open those chests, speedy racer goggles. It may take a couple days, you may get it on your first try. No idea. Uh, it took me about four days to get it. It took my best friend, uh, which is our, our hunter cleansing. It took him about 20 minutes. And it took me running our rogue, Una, uh, about 30 minutes. So they got really lucky. I got terrible luck. The good thing is that it does drop a whole slew of about level 25-ish to 55, 60 um, uh, jewelry pieces, like rings necklaces back pieces so you can auction house those you can vendor them for a decent amount of gold you can just disenchant them um whatever you want to do with those and you'll also get a bunch of scrolls now high level scrolls work if you cast them on a twink so just keep that in mind next we're going to be looking at the reinforced woolen shoulders now reinforced woolen shoulders this has been changed for turtle wow to add four stamina for spirit it's great I don't remember them adding that before. I'm almost positive that the... I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure the reinforced woolen sh shoulders were just gray wool shoulders. But, four stamina, four spirit, fantastic. Fucking fantastic. Tailoring recipe, by the way. Um, engineering cloak. So this cloak you actually get from a quest in Stone Talon Mountains. If you go out to Stone Talon Mountains, the quest that has you go up and kill the... The uh, known engineer, it's in this area. So Stone Talon Mountains, you'll get sent on a quest to go up here, right? That, that's where he is. And kill the boss, um, the boss guy of that crew. You kill the boss guy, turn it in, boom. That's how you get your cloak. That's five stamina, two, two intellect on a cloak. That's fucking crazy. Tree Bark Jacket. Oh, how I hate thee. Um, tree Bark Jacket is incredibly overpowered very rare and it drops from any mob in black fathom deeps just like most of the gear on this character if you decide to roll a caster twink you will live in black fathom deeps for a month or two unless somehow all of your gear is on the auction house so there's that uh let's see bright bracers don't look at these Okay, don't look at those. They're a placeholder. I need four stamp four intellect bracers. Those are just, those are there. Ignore those. Don't worry about them. Uh, Mage Fist Gloves. Now, 
with gloves, this is where things get kind of... It's a toss-up. So you have 13 healing gloves that you can get. Those are pretty okay. Um, and it's going to add about 2 points of healing per tick to your renew. And then 13 just flat damage, pretty much, um, to your lesser and greater heal. So it's okay. Uh, they're not terrible. I don't really like them. I don't think they add enough to, to substantiate using them. The gloves that you want to use in place until you get Mage Fist is four or Shimmering Gloves of the Eagle. These you can actually buy from a vendor. You can't, there's no way to guarantee them, but over in Ratchet, right outside of the inn. So there's the inn with the little high elf guy right there. As soon as you walk up the inn, you look to your left, there's a little goblin fisherman. He sells Shimmering Gloves with a randomized value. They can be 4-4 four, four Eagle. They can be 4-4 four, four, uh, Monkey. If you get those, please, please send them to me. COD them for like 5 gold. If you get 4-4 four, four, any 4-4 four, four Agility, Stamina, Gloves, you get Leather or Cloth, please, please COD me. I will pay you 5 gold and happily do so. Just, you know, Enigmatic, Kamal, Kronkleflops, Shrazzlebog, Mirari, any of those characters. Pick one. Um, we're still looking for those, by the way. So that's where you get the gloves. Once you're ready to get to Mage Fist, these, again, drop from any mob and BFD. So there's that. Uh, seven agility. Why do I have agility on my gloves? Oh, well, because agility actually affects the critical strike chance on any ranged weapon. You know, like a wand. So, agility on your twink will increase your wand's critical strike chance. Just keep that in mind. Keller's belt. There is a belt that you can get that I think is it's 5 intellect, 3 stamina. It's not this one, is it? No, it's not that one. Uh, I was wearing it until I got Keller's. I don't remember exactly what it's called. It's like Brimestone or something along those lines. Keller's belt drops again any mob in black fathoms deep run black fathoms deep hopefully you'll get colors girl uh pants currently i'm at five four these are a placeholder i'm currently trying to get dark weave britches dark weave britches are pants that drop from any mob in black fathom deeps <laughs> i know it's fun. It's fun. Once I get those, though, uh, I'll get the Dark Weave on, which... Let me look up the stats while I while I talk about it. So, once I get the Britches, I'm actually going to be getting the 100 health enchant on them. I have the enchant queued up and ready to go. I just have to actually get the pants so I can put them on there, which will push me over 1,000 health, which is buffed. And then the Dark Weave Britches that I'm going for, they're going to be one less stamina... Than the other like this uh, this placeholder pants because you can get five five intellect stamina pants at level nineteen, uh, which would be great. Dark weave though, instead of the five stamina that you would have, it's four stamina, it's seven intellect, and six spirit. So those pants will give you a little bit more intellect. You're gonna lose one stamina if you have the five five pants, but the one stamina is worth the intellect as well as the spirit um so those those again bfd good luck sanguine sandals so sanguine sandals are actually the bis item for stamina for intellect boots they drop everywhere there's i i think i have like five or six pairs of these just laying around um this is a placeholder ring the ring that's going to take this place is actually acquired from Warsong Gulch Reputation. Amulet is Warsong Gulch Reputation. Whatever. Uh, Signet of Durotar. This is a T-Wow quest that I don't remember the name of right now. I apologize, but if you go to T-Wow database, just Google T-Wow database, look up this ring. This ring 
is insane. I think this quest line starts in Razor Hill with the quest called the Second Wave. There's both a caster and a non-caster ring that drops from it. So regardless of what your twink is, start the second wave and follow that quest line through completion. The trinkets, I'm using these two currently for when I'm running around. If I know that I'm actually going into a fight, I'm throwing on my Arena Grandmaster. This gives me an additional dodge chance and a shield that absorbs 750 to 1200 pretty good it's pretty fucking good um you get this from 12 tokens on the garabashi arena so what i did is when this character was level seven i just went out and parked her in garabashi and then every three hours when the chest would spawn i would hop on if there was no one there and the chest was there i would run down in the middle i would grab it i would run up and then i would log out and then log back in three hours later if there were people i would just log out immediately and go back to another character. There's no point in me wasting my time there. So that's kind of a pro tip. Do it early, in my opinion. That way you can just park the character there and forget about it. Make it your first piece of gear that you get. It's one of the most time consuming and the most annoying because unless you park your character there, you're gonna have to continually go back out to Garabashi 12 times if you get the chest every single time. So there's that. For weapons, I've got the Staff of Blessed Seer. Um, there's a couple different variations you can go. I like it because of the bonus healing power. This is going to increase the healing done by spells and effect by 24. A little bit of stamina, a little bit of spirit. The Twist Enchanter Staff is really good. It's a lot more stamina, a lot more intellect. Um, you could also go the route of Evoker's Blade, which is a stamina spirit dagger and the Timber Maw Pouch. But here's the thing, I don't want to go through that rep grind. And it's, it's just, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. The other, I guess, sorry, uh, Gravestone Scepter. This this is also a BOE drop. Um, I'm pretty sure it can drop in BFD. I think I got this. Pretty sure I got this in BFD. I'm almost positive I did. It was one of the first items. It was just a, a rare drop BOE that I got for me. Um, and then Gravestone Stepper. So this is actually a quest inside BFD again. So you go inside BFD, you talk to the the guy that's like laying down in the little campfire nook cove area, um, complete his quest, and you get this. This is 29 DPS. 29 DPS. I don't think people understand just how strong that is. I will just, in closing, show you the Biss Hunter ranged weapon. Nine point six. Now, obviously. It doesn't take into account the chance on hit for the Venom Strike, or for Venom Shot, which is incredibly strong. There's arguments and debates on whether the Pea Shooter is better or if this is better. I'm just going to go with what my Hunter tells me, which is that Pea Shooter will never compare to the amount of damage that this weapon puts out. I'm going to go with him. He plays a hunter. I don't. Anyways, I hope that y'all enjoyed this video. If you are looking for some PvP type activities that you want to get yourself into, please consider looking us up. Consider joining us. We would love to have more people in the ranks. More people to run with us and have fun and just, you know, have, have some happy, happy fun times. Um, when you're leveling your twink, Level up your first aid. I'm level 19. I have 872 health. Okay, let's see. Yeah, okay. Fully buffed, I have about 940 health, I think. So, fully buffed applies one buff. Um, <laughs> what is it? Nine, 950. So, 950 health is what I have. 
This heals for 2,000 over 8 seconds. Now, you cannot craft these at 125, 225, whatever the fuck it is. Um, 225. You cannot craft these. But what you can do is you can have them crafted for you. And then you can use them. And then you completely heal yourself in like one or two ticks. So you get into a fight. Someone's beating the dog shit out of you. You get off a of fear. You get off a of fucking Ross Nova stun, a gouge, anything like that. A concussive blow so you can get a little bit or a concussive shot. Wing clip, whatever, so you can get a little bit of distance. Pop this. One, two clicks. You're fully healed. It's beautiful. It's it's beautiful. Um, and engineering. Engineering, you gotta have your bombs. I'm currently working on engineering. That's what I was trying to work on the other day. And then I found out about the, about the PvP tournament and I had to throw everything to the side and go partake in that. But engineering will help you leaps and bounds. Um, the explosive sheeps, the bronze bombs, anything that does a stun. So like this is a one second stun. The bronze bomb is a two second stun. Is it impactful? No. Is it a stop cast? Yes. Doesn't matter if the stun's long or not. What matters is that you can stop casting with it. That is the important thing. We're level 19s. It, it takes, you know, one or two good hits and that makes or breaks the game. You being able to get off a bomb and stop cast their heal, you just broke the game. You level a priest, dispelling a fucking druid. You're running around, you see a druid healing himself, you just start spamming dispel. Guess what? He's running around like, it's fine, I got heals. Oh, wait. I'm dead. What happened? Oh, all my hots were dispelled. Well, that sucks. You're right. It does. Anyways, guys, I hope y'all like this video. I'll be coming out with another one here in the next couple of days where we'll be looking at both Una, which is our which is our uh, rogue, and then also Cleansing, which is our hunter. And we are also currently working on getting a warrior and a shaman rolling, as well as another priest. So, again, if you are interested in world PvP, using a level 19 to run around and bully level 30s, Check us out. We'd love to help you get that going. Anyways, I'll see y'all later. Peace.